Are you thinking about purchasing a photo stick to back up all of your pictures from your computer or your iPhone? They are a way to back up your pictures, but are they the right solution for the long term? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Molly Bartelt. I own Pixology, where we've been organizing and backing people's photos up for going on 10 years. We have a plan to help people save their photos once and for all. And if you need a roadmap, check the link below and sign up. We'd love to send our system for saving pictures to you. I'm talking about photo sticks today because I had a YouTube viewer ask me if this was a good solution. I'm a little biased because we, we actually did sell a photo stick years ago. Here it was called the Picture Keeper, and it was really a neat little device, but we found out that it just wasn't a good long-term solution. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what photo sticks do, I'm going to share the pitfalls of relying on one, and then I'll also give you a few tips on what we do to make sure photos are backed up properly. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. I upload videos routinely to make sure that you have the education and information you need to save your photos the right way the first time. Photo sticks, I think, are like glorified USB drives. When you buy a photo stick, chances are there is a software on it and when you connect it to your device, it will launch a program. It varies whether you're connecting it to a computer or to a phone. And then once that software launches, you get to tell it what you want to back up. It could be photos, videos, sometimes it'll back up documents as well. So you kind of have to figure that out. And then when you're set on what you want to have be backed up, you click a backup button. Hopefully all of those files will be found on your computer or your phone and backed up to the drive. Once the backup is done, you disconnect it and then you put it in a safe place and you bring it out the next time you need to back up more to it. It sounds really simple, doesn't it? But when you actually get down to the nitty gritty of selecting what you want to back up, making sure it actually did back up or holding onto the drive in a safe place for when you need it, that's where things go a little awry, okay? Just to make sure that I wasn't speaking out of turn based on other people's experience, I did a little bit of checking on other photo stick reviews. I loved this video here from Computer Clan who talked about the Omni photo stick. And then I also found this video helpful from the Digital Scrapbooking Headquarters. So if you want to really get a good review of these sticks, go check those videos out. I learned from these videos that my suspicions were correct, that these devices really are a complicated step that could be avoided if you had a proper backup system. Let me tell you about the concerns I have with using a photo stick. First of all, when you put a photo stick in, and let's say it works and backs everything up properly, it really gives you a false sense of security. You're going to put that drive you know, down away somewhere safe, and then are you going to really back up your next batch of pictures? Will you come back to it? You think, oh, it's all good, and then it's just left there. And that's just human nature. We don't often <laughs> stay consistent with our backups in general. The second thing that I worry about, these drives advertise that they will not copy duplicates over to the drive. Well, which duplicates aren't being backed up to the drive? Some duplicates have the right date on them and some duplicates don't. And some duplicates can be a smaller version of a file and it makes me worried about which pictures are actually being saved and backed up to the drive. Another concern is, all right, you buy the 64 gigabyte you know, photo stick, but you have 80 gigabytes of photos. Now you have to go get a second one. And managing two photo backups, restoring them, sounds complicated and it kind of gets messy when you need to restore them if the worst happens. So that's another reason. Mm. I also wonder, are you using your cloud backups as well? Like on an iPhone, your pictures might be backing up to iCloud or your Android phone might be backing up to Google Photos. 
Are you making another backup when your cloud might be doing the work for you? A lot of people don't understand what's being saved where, and I think these drives just kind of add to the digital chaos. Lastly, let's say that the backup worked perfectly, all right? Flash forward four years when your computer dies. Will you be able to find your photo stick? I really question it. I know myself, I can't keep track of things for too long. And a photo stick seems like it would be pretty important, but think about the camera cards that you have stashed around the house or CDs of pictures. You know, things just inevitably get misplaced. And if you need that backup because you're you have a problem, you might have a bigger problem when you can't find it. And that's what I worry about is putting something on a tiny little photo stick and hoping that it's gonna be around when you really need it. Uh, you might be seriously disappointed when you can't find it. Is this hitting home yet? I hope so. Give the video a thumbs up if it is and that way more people will learn about what a good photo backup might be. So what is, what is a good photo backup? Here at Pixology, we recommend that people work with their pictures on their computer. And we recommend getting all the pictures to one folder. It could be your pictures folder, but it could also be a new folder you make on your desktop, like Photos to Organize is what we teach. So you get all your pictures in the Photos to Organize folder, and then you just simply copy it to your USB or an external hard drive, and now you've got a backup. The next step would be to clean out the photos to organize folder, uh, you know, get rid of the duplicates. And if you need a duplicate finding program, I've got um, one linked up there, the Duplicate Photos Fixer Pro. Clean up the folders and once everything's cleaned up, you could change the name photos to organize to being the master family photos folder. If you want to know more about that process, remember the link below about the roadmap. We, we talk about it in there. I know I made that sound overly simple. The truth is there are many moving parts to saving your pictures, you know, both the digital and the printed. If you need help, I would love to talk with you. You can see my calendar link below as well. And if you're thinking you should be checking out cloud photo storage, watch this video next. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you the next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>